Hey everyone, it's Tabby Wessa, and I want to make a sort of announcement in regards to the channel. First of all, I wanted to thank everybody who has commissioned me over the last couple of months. All of you have been a great help, and I am so grateful for that. For everyone still interested in commissions, they are still open, and there will be a link in the description to my Twitter where you can find a chart of my current commission prices. As for my channel announcement, I am currently in the planning process of producing daily content for the channel. This content will mainly consist of speed art and commentary, and the reason for this is because it's easy to make, it's easy to produce pretty fast, and I see a lot of other YouTube artists basically doing the same thing, and I'd like to see how far I can actually get with this. Um, I would like to add, however, that to avoid any drama or anything political, um, most of the commentary that I will use will probably mostly just be like opinions, things that are on my mind, and you know, maybe just a little uh, story time of how my day went or you know, whatever, whatever happens to be on my mind at the time. Um, <clears throat> what kind of art? Well, basically what you, the kind of thing that you see on screen right now. Um, speed art is basically um, somebody recording themselves drawing something from start to finish, uh, speeding up the footage. In this case, I sped it up times five because the whole process took me about two and a half hours just to draw this one piece and even at five times speed it is still about a half hour long so um i might speed up um future videos to be a lot shorter so that i don't have to fill up a half hour of content however um, i do plan on making each video a minimum of 10 to 15 minutes long um, so future videos will probably be sped up a lot more than this. Um, so uh, what would I be drawing? It just based, same as the commentary, basically whatever I feel like drawing when I'm recording. Um, I do, however, uh, want to get to a point where I can allow followers or subscribers to have some sort of influence on what I draw and what I talk about. So, um, feel free to leave comments in my most recent video. I probably will not check older videos. So, if uh, in the future, if anybody wants to uh, give any input or have, you know, kind of like a sort of like a request of, you know, you want to see me draw something just to see if I can draw it. Um, yeah, just kind of feel free to leave a comment, give suggestions, and um, as far as commentary is concerned, however, just uh, the only thing I ask is that um, you don't ask me to um, go after any exposés or anything like that, because I don't want to get into any uh, internet drama if I can avoid it. Uh, and, you know, of course, anything, I might ignore any comments that suggest anything that is otherwise too spicy or I simply don't have or know enough information about the topic to give any sort of meaningful input. Um, so what's the goal of all of this? Well, um, obviously I want my channel to grow, uh, get a bigger following, maybe get enough followers to, uh, or subscribers rather, to become maybe a YouTube partner and actually start monetizing or getting sponsorships so that I can make the money. Um, which is the main reason why I want to avoid anything that could possibly get videos demonetized. Can't make the money if I get demonetized, you know? Um, and I know that that's a long way from now though, so... It, that's the goal. I don't see myself getting there instantaneously or anything like that. 
So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna work on it. I'm gonna see how far this goes. And um, um, I kind of already stated this, uh, but the uh, I also want there to be more fan-oriented content as I grow. So I don't, I don't know, um, I don't know exactly where um, I want. I think maybe. Um, when I get to a thousand, I'll do like an FAQ or something like that. But if, uh, if I ever get enough of a following where I have a bunch of people sending me fan art or any sort of, um, collaboration, I'll probably do shout outs for all of that. Um, and that's just kind of to name a few ideas. <clears throat> Might even do like art contest or something as I get bigger. And bigger uh, and that's you know if I even grow but that's basically it for the announcement itself and uh, for those who are still watching trying who want to see the, uh, the the full process of the drawing that I am that you see before you um, I will start by having a little bit of story time for the next 25 or so minutes. For today's story time, I want to talk about who I am as a person as a way for my viewers to get an idea of what they can expect from me moving forward. Some of the things I'm about to tell you may get a little jaw-dropping or surprise some of you and that's okay. I just want to get things out of the way for transparency's sake. Uh, for the more basic bits of info, I am... 32 years old as of making this video. I'm an artist who can draw almost anything my brain can come up with, from still life to imaginary. Almost being the key word. There are some things that I still need some practice with. Um, though I pride myself in having any sort of artistic talent, I'm always happy to see new artists pop up and share their work for the world to see. I do my best to give positive and constructive criticism that might help them grow and I will often even befriend them or give them tips that I use for myself that they could also try. But please keep in mind that I'm not very good at explaining things verbally a lot of the time. Um, and I'm not necessarily trying to call myself a teacher of any sort either. Just once in a while, I might, you know, give somebody that little, that little nudge in a direction I think might work better. Or make things easier. One or the other. And, you know, I'm not sure if, uh, I don't know if it's a mental problem or not, but without a script, I have trouble staying on track when I'm talking about any sort of topic. Um, especially if I'm just basically talking to myself in a microphone. Um, so I will probably be reading whatever my free writing is, which is basically what I do when I'm jotting down my thoughts, kind of like a diary. Um, speaking of possible mental issues, uh, besides dyslexia, I don't have any official diagnosis of any specific disorder. Not to my recollection anyways. However, it is worth noting that I have a history of depression, anxiety, and a little, some anger management issues. Haha. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I was kind of a rowdy kid growing up. And growing up, I faced a lot of challenges that um, caused a bit of trauma. And I haven't fully recovered from all of it. However, I've recovered enough that it isn't an everyday thought on my mind. But sometimes if I see somebody who was in a similar situation that I might have experienced myself, it kind of trips this sort of switch in my brain that kind of makes me go into like defense mode and, you know, want to go to that person's aid and kind of go ape shit on the person who's causing trouble. 
Um, or at the very least, do what I can to get to the bottom of it so that they can either stop harassing the person who's innocent or the person who's guilty can, you know, at least apologize or own up to what they did. Uh, for example, um, cyberbullying, I can't stand it. I, I do not like it when I see somebody being accused of things that they didn't do, especially when there's absolutely no proof that they did whatever it is they're being accused of. And I usually jump right on those, especially if it involves a friend or somebody that I'm acquainted with that I know isn't a bad person. Though, when I was a kid, <laughs> uh, remember when I mentioned anger management issues? Um, when I was a kid, I was way more aggressive and violent with my approach. Um, these days, I'm a lot more passive and I prefer to use my words. And, you know, I, I tend to say vulgarities quite a bit when I'm pissed off. But, um, uh, me going, nowadays, me going pure ape shit on somebody almost never happens in real life. Unless I feel like there is a legitimate danger that needs, you know, physical contact to be the solution for whatever reason. Like a punch to the face, for example. Um, but it takes a lot for me to get to that point. Uh, usually what it boils down to is the aggressor harassing me to the point that would drive anyone bonkers. And so I'll help you <laughs> if you lay hands on me or try to block any sort of escape for me to get out of that situation. If I'm trying to get away from you, let me go. It's for your own good. If I'm trying to get away, it's because I know it's coming. I know that I'm about to lose my goddamn mind. So the best course of action for you would just be to let it go. Let me walk away. Otherwise, if you try to stop me or, you know, lay hands on me in any sort of way, I would probably very likely go into fight mode and you will probably have a minimum of a black eye or two by the end of it all, before I have any sort of hint of calming down. Uh, moral of the story, uh, I, I think Nickelodeon's Hey Arnold said it best. You should never mess with a crazy person. Um, I mean, am I crazy? I mean, sometimes, but I guess it sort of depends on how you interpret crazy. Uh, some might say I'm crazy in a good way that makes them laugh or refer to me as like a mad lass or, you know, or simply because, you know, I have interpretations of opinions that, you know, kind of come off as humorous. And some people, now, when I'm comfortable enough around a certain group of people, like friends, family, uh, and, you know, I don't feel awkward and quiet all the time, a more bubbly side of me will come out, and people find that side of me to be fun to be around. And it's fun for me to be that way. And I, I hope that in the future I get comfortable enough with making videos that that side of me will show more and more as, you know, the channel grows and I become a little more confident. Um, and some people just like how eccentric I can be. Like, I'm an artist. To be a little eccentric is kind of expected, but sometimes, like, it's mild and tame, and other times it's like, where the fuck did my mind go with that idea? Um, especially when I'm, like, inspired to draw something that's, you know, a little more, um, I don't share them very often, but there's some pieces that I've drawn that aren't really akin to my usual style of art. Usually I draw things that are kind of cartoony and, you know, cute and cuddly. But then other times I'll be, like, in a dark place and I'll draw something that's, like, depressing or maybe even a little gory and kind of freaky and people wonder, 
people will actually be concerned when I post that sort of thing. So I tried not to share the, the darker pieces of work that I make um, as much as possible. Um, I don't know, maybe around Halloween I'll share some of my, you know, scarier drawings, but for the most part, it's mostly just going to be the more lighthearted, maybe some dragons, animals. Um, as for, you know, me being crazy, some might think I'm kind of full of it, like, no, you're not really crazy. You're just, you know, you're just hamming it up a bit. You're being, you're just being silly. You're doing it for attention. And, you know, that's okay. I don't expect people to believe, you know, every little thing that comes out of my mouth or agree with what I have to say 100% of the time. But I would be lying if I said there wasn't something wrong. I just don't know what it is. And... I'd also be lying if I said that I wasn't sharing this information as a means to get attention. Because, you know, part of how a successful channel works is to get attention, right? You gotta do something. And, yeah, I don't expect this to be, like, the crutch of my channel or anything. I, I definitely don't plan on abusing this. Again, this is just... To let people know what they can expect in the future during possibly during certain circumstances I'm gonna try to avoid sharing more negative things but I can't make any promises either there, there might be times when I'm in such a dark place that I absolutely have to get something off my chest but I promise that will not be a regular thing um, and I would never intentionally lie about something like I might accidentally share like misinformation like maybe I got something wrong but when it comes to information about myself I promise you I will not lie about that will I omit a few things probably but that just depends on how relevant that information is for example the the events that took place in my childhood that were traumatizing I'm probably not going to get into that. Mainly because some of it is really, really fucked up. And yeah, I don't, I don't want to drag people down with that sort of baggage. <clears throat> Maybe one day, but not today. And not any time in the foreseeable future. Um, it's rare, but there are times when, like... Somebody, I'll, I'll see somebody on Twitter who will think that I am a complete nutcase just because of an opinion I have. And a majority of the time, the, the person who calls me a nutcase is kind of projecting and kind of crazy themselves. So I don't usually let that kind of thing bother me. But for whatever reason, if I see the same thing happen to like a friend or somebody I know, or at least you know, believe is a nice person, somebody that I would see myself as being a friend, if given the opportunity, I do get a little triggered. <laughs> Anybody who has seen my Twitter knows what I'm talking about. And I will probably jump right on that person's throat, you know, not, hyperbolically, of course. I mean, I will, obviously I can't jump on somebody's throat via Twitter. That's, uh, not literally, anyways. But that being said, um, yeah, I do get I do get a little triggered when I see somebody picking on my friends. That's something that has carried over from my childhood. I have always and will always continue to stand up for my friends because some random asshole on Twitter that has no sentimental connection with the person that they're attacking couldn't possibly know what the fuck they're talking about and so I'll probably step right up and be like hey uh, you got some proof to go with that accusation motherfucker or something like that and you know more often than not either they have no proof at all or they've cropped any and all context that would have made whatever statement they're using as proof um, any kind of reliable um, 
So yeah. So usually my tactic is just kind of I will I'll persist in telling them they're wrong and that they're the ones being the assholes, not my friend, until it gets to the point where they just kind of give up or block me, whichever happens, and you know stop harassing my friend. And yeah, I let's just say when it comes to my friends, I got you. <laughs> It got you and uh, as long you know provided that there isn't substantial proof that you may have done something a little fucked up in which case you know I might be like bro <laughs> gotta do better doesn't mean I'll stop being your friend but you gotta do better um, but more often than not I have yet to fall into a situation where uh, one of my friends was actually in the wrong. It's usually just somebody pulling a bunch of, you know, grasping at straws and just pulling a bunch of bullshit from their ass. Um, and then there's, uh, there's things like cancel culture. Um, I'm not really interested in that unless someone actually did something totally messed up, like, uh, like with the Blizzard Activision controversy, controversy that happened uh, about a month or so ago, that was totally fucked, and the the people involved in that abuse deserve to be canceled or you know arrested rather. Um, yeah, they should rot in jail, not just canceled. Like they justice must be swift with those ones. Um, but if it's something as trivial as somebody writing a cook, a noodle cookbook, or someone has a difference in opinion, it isn't worth canceling, and I'm not a fan of that sort of thing. It's, to me, it's, at that point, it's just another form of cyberbullying. I'm not a fan. Um, I would much rather... Uh, be a more supportive presence and help people grow and do better, especially when it comes to the creative and artist community. If I see somebody uh, who not only loves to create art or music, but has the desire to improve, I want to help fuel that passionate fire of theirs with encouragement and enthusiasm. That is, you know, not this... Uh, and not this I fixed your art nonsense that I've seen trending in the art community for the last couple of years. Get that shit out of here. Um, anybody who does that sort of thing totally is missing the point of freedom of expression and what it means to have a cre creative interpretation. Tampering with somebody else's creative interpretation of anything just because you didn't like the way it looked yourself is a little on the toxic side, in my opinion. I'm not a big fan. Um, but to, uh, to sort of finish this video off, um, I'd like to wind things down a little by kind of just sharing a little more trivial information and facts about myself. Um, so besides drawing uh, I also enjoy playing video games. I I don't I don't own any manga these days. I've I've unfortunately had to you know give up some of that stuff and you know sell or donate things just to kind of <clears throat> excuse me just to kind of uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I just had a really big move and I wasn't able to take everything with me so I basically had to cut down on some of the you know a lot of stuff that I have used to have so I don't have as many like manga and stuff that I used to I think I still have a few but it, I think they're actually my husband's but um, manga and anime that I have a fond enjoyment of recently um, and in the past, I I like Full Metal Alchemist, Cowboy Bebop. You know the you know the more stapley, 
uh, anime that you would expect any typical anime fan to like, like Dragon Ball Z, Pokemon, um, Inuyasha, and then, uh, the more recent titles that have been coming out, such as, uh, you know, My Hero Academia. I'm not as big a fan as, uh, with, with Baruto. I, I don't think I even finished Naruto. That, the filler got to me on some of those. Um, <clears throat> I have been meaning to get into, um, watching shows like, um, Gegege no Kitaro, is it Kitaro? Kitaro? Yeah. Um, been wanting to get more into that. That seems like a cute little show. Um, there was another one. Dragon Maid, I think, is what I keep hearing my husband call it, calling it. He's been watching it with a friend. Um, unfortunately, uh, I haven't had a whole lot of time to watch anime or read manga, like, at my leisure. Because, like I said, I just moved. We're still kind of getting things sorted out and trying to plant our roots a little bit here. Um, work pretty mundane jobs right now. Uh, my husband's working at a pet shop, or at least a pet supply shop. It, it's, it's called Pet Sense. They don't necessarily sell a lot of animals. They're mostly pet supplies, but they do occasionally have like um, pet, like animals from animal shelters that they'll bring by like every week or every other week or something like that to help get more animals adopted. Um, and maybe some lizards or reptiles, but not very much. It's a pretty small store. And then I'm working at a deli, which th those are our day jobs. I do commissions, as I've mentioned in my intro. Side. Um, it's not that bad of a job. I mean, it gets a little hectic sometimes, but it's, it's far from the worst job I've ever had. It's just, it keeps me busy. And I kind of like jobs like that, that you know, keep me doing something at all times, not just standing around and waiting for somebody to check out at a cash register or something like that. Um, so those are some of my favorite shows. I've also, oh yeah, Castlevania. I was watching the Castlevania animated series. I finished season four. It's, I'm okay with the way that ended. That was pretty, that was pretty epic. Um, and uh, if you haven't seen that, uh, the Netflix series Castlevania, you should totally watch it, especially if you're a fan of the older Castlevania games. You'll you'll like it. You'll love the interpretations of everything. It's pretty good. Um, I don't and I don't want to get into it because this isn't exactly a review video. But um, moving on, um, some games that I've been playing. Uh, recently include, uh, The Messenger, which is an indie title, it's pretty fun, it's like, uh, it's like Ninja Gaiden and Metroid put together, so it's like a, it's a Ninja Metroidvania type game. It's a lot of fun, it's, it's hard too, but still a lot of fun. Um, easy to play, hard to master, that kind of thing. Um, I've also been playing, um, I've also been playing some, uh, Mad Rat Dead. That's become one of my newer favorites, actually. Um, I didn't think, I'd never played a, uh, a rhythm platformer like that before. I really like it. <laughs> it it's interesting. It's a lot of fun to play. I, I kind of wish it got more attention when it first came out, because really good. Um, I hope it doesn't fade into obscurity <laughs> or that it's not just a one shot because I would actually like to see a sequel of that one. Um, I might make, you know, I might for fun make a review video of Mad Rat Dead or maybe some of the other games that I've played on my channel so far. Speaking of which, um, other favorites of mine include uh, Rocket Knight Adventures, Pokemon, Final Fantasy, um, 
there's a lot of indie titles that I find myself enjoying, like Kingdom, The Two Crowns. Um, I've also played Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night, which is, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, it's basically like a spiritual successor to the Metroidvania Castlevanias, like uh, Symphony of the Night, it's made by the same people. Um, I don't know how complete it is, like, I guess there's a bunch of stuff in the fun, in the, uh, the Kickstarter that hasn't been fulfilled yet, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I haven't been following that sort of thing like my husband has, who did back it, uh, and he got, like, the, the fancy case and everything. And, yeah. The game itself is enjoyable, though, and so are the, um, so are the 8-bit, um, side project games that they made alongside it, um, Curse of the Moon, and it has a sequel as well. Both of them are very fun. They're, they're enjoyable. If you ever get a chance to look those up, check it out. Especially if you like Castlevania anything. Um, things I, uh, oh yeah, Gradius. Gradius is one of my favorite games of all time. I I pretty much grew up playing Gradius 3 on the Super Nintendo. That was like one of the first games I ever played. <laughs> and it's hard. Uh, but still a lot of fun to play. Um, I don't know. I, I seem to gravitate towards games that are known for their difficulty and some of them being like almost unfair <laughs> in the opinion of some folks. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I like punishing games for some reason. Binding of Isaac? I love it. Uh, Castlevania? I love it. Contra? Love it. <laughs> God, I'm naming, I'm naming a lot of, like, Konami games, but, um, other games that I grew up loving were Final Fantasy... Mega Man. Mega Man for a long time was like my biggest obsession for like, I want to say between the ages of 5 and 17. So basically I played Mega Man X for the Super Nintendo and I was basically hooked for the rest of all time. I haven't played as much Mega Man lately, but I do own, like, all of the legacy collections and stuff. And I might do, like, uh, like, little marathon live streams or something as and just playing through all of them. I mean, I doubt I'll be able to play through every single Mega Man game in one sitting because that's a lot of Mega Man. <laughs> uh, I mean, the first legacy collection, which I believe is Mega Man 1 through 10... I mean, that alone will probably take me two separate streams to finish. Uh, the Mega Man X game is probably a lot easier, although I, I dread the idea of playing Mega Man X 7 again. <laughs> I think almost every Mega Man fan can agree that that one is awful. For so many reasons. And I'm glad that they only did that for one game. <laughs> um, some of my favorite things to draw... Are, uh, include, if you couldn't tell by looking at all of my Twitter or even my DeviantArt page, um, it almost always consists of cartoony animal characters, but I also like to draw, you know, mythical creatures like dragons and kind of whatever I can make up at, at any sort of time. I like to make up new types of dragons and monsters all the time. Um, just for, I mean, mostly just for fun, but I probably will use some of those ideas in the future. Um, kind of like, uh, I, I am taking classes, uh, to be a, um, a game designer, so I'll probably take a lot of the ideas that I've kind of made up in, on my free time and try to find ways to implement them into a game of some sort. I haven't decided if I want to make, like, an RPG or an action game. I might go with action first, because I've heard that 
uh, making stats for RPGs can be a, kind of a pain in the ass if you don't know what you're doing. Um, like even even like AAA titles in the past have had issues where like they'll have all these stats, but some of them do absolutely nothing, or they accidentally programmed it so it does the opposite of improve. But yeah. I probably will just make like sort of an action RPG, well not an action RPG, but uh, just like an action platformer or something just for fun. And if I get really good at it, I might even make like a, I might even just make a game that I could sell on Steam or something like that. Um, or do maybe a humble bundle or something like that, but we'll see how far that gets. Um, with that being said, I'm about out of time for this video. I've actually gone a little over um, what I was planning to talk about, but um, hopefully um, I'll be able to consistently produce more um, more content for you in the future. I'm gonna. My goal is to make daily content and artist diaries and speed arts and whatnot for you. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to actually keep that consistent, but I will do my damnedest to make sure that I do. Uh, that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully that'll be tomorrow. And you have a nice day.